to today's live IELTS class here on YouTube. My name is Adrian and I am broadcasting to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Kyber. Good to see students joining in at the start of class. All right. Today, we are looking at IELTS speaking part three. The speaking interview has three parts. Part one, some general questions. Part two, the cue card, the long part, two minutes. Part three is the uh, specific questions related to part two. We'll talk more about that. Hi, Tina. Hi, Parvinder. Hi, Amrit. Good to see you in class. One of our members. Students, uh, for lots of help with the uh, IELTS exam, check out our premium package at aehelp.com for the academic module and for the general module, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. Uh, on both of those websites, you can use the code LIVE20 to get a 20% discount, help you crack that exam. Uh, the websites look like this. This is the academic here. Click that red button to join. When you click it, use the code LIVE20 for that 20% discount. This is the general. Click that red button there to join that website. All right, so let's get into it. If you have questions, you can always send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Hi, Hippie24, sending me the heart. Thank you for that. Emoji, feeling very positive. All right, students, so um, part three of the speaking. So... Um, Part three, uh, you should be feeling very comfortable by this time, okay? Uh, hopefully you did a good job on part two of the speaking and um, you answered the cue card as best as possible. Now comes some questions uh, for part three. Uh, what should you keep in mind for part three? I know that we have a lot of students who watch these classes regularly, so what's important to remember? What are some of the key points uh, for doing well in part three and getting a high band score. So let's see if it's a question to see how well you're paying attention and retaining information from previous classes. So what should, uh, what should I pay attention to? I'm in my exam, I'm doing great, I've been practicing at home. Uh, what do I need to uh, pay attention to in part three? Uh, Pachu, you, you shouldn't be exhausted, okay? You should have energy. It's a 15 minute exam. Shouldn't be too exhausting if you're uh, not too nervous. Pachu says to keep calm and confident, absolutely. That's true for the whole speaking. Okay, what else should we keep in mind? Uh, Tina says, use the questions to show that you understand uh, and use the tense. Absolutely. Okay. So use the questions in your answers to show understanding and reflect grammar. So if the question's present perfect, have you ever been to a zoo or sorry, uh, it won't be about you, but uh, if it's using have you ever or have, has this ever happened, then show that in your response as well. Uh, Golzoda says be natural. Okay, yeah, so definitely be natural. Um, answer questions, don't waste time. Uh, Silin Wang, that's what you said. Yep, that's good as well. Um, by don't waste time, Silin Wang, another way to say that is don't overspeak. So <clears throat> answer, explain, smooth example. And 
And don't over speak. Okay. All right. Yeah, Tina just said the same. Don't speak too much. Don't go off topic. Yeah, Paula said that too. Don't go off topic. Yeah, in part three, that is one of the most common mistakes. So thank you, Paula, and thank you, Tina, for emphasizing that for all of our students and reminding everybody about that important point is do not go off topic. It happens very often. I see this with students. Do not go off topic. <clears throat> all right. Um, Rahul says concept, elaborate an example. Uh, Rahul, I think a better way to say that is answer, explain example, answer, explain example, concept and elaborate. It's kind of confusing sometimes for students what that actually means. So answer, explain example. It's a little bit more uh, straightforward. Thank you, Vivek. We're just sporting our, uh, new, um, shirts uh, that we have available on our YouTube channel. So thanks for <laughs> noticing that. All right. Yeah, Pachu says there is no right and wrong answer. Sure. Uh, what else? So uh, we have some good answers. There's still a couple other important concepts to keep in mind. Okay, what else? What else should I keep in mind uh, for part three? Especially for part three. Okay, so one of them is ask for time. Yeah, buying time, that's right, Pachu. So some part three questions are a little bit difficult, even in your own language. We don't think about them every day. So uh, buy some time if you have to, okay? Ask for time. Say, that's an interesting question. Please give me a moment to think of a good answer. Or uh, I've never thought about that before. Can I just have a moment to think about an answer? Okay, now students, this is a speaking class so uh, repeat after me these are important phrases okay so repeat after me i've never thought about that before please give me a moment that's an interesting question can i have a second to think of an answer okay so maybe don't use that for every question but certainly if you get an unusual question need a moment to think about what you're being asked or what's the answer, then buy some time, okay? Um, now, uh, Pachu says, as I mentioned before, now that's a different note, Pachu. So this is a very important one for part three. Remember to make connections among your part three answers and to your part two response. Okay, uh, the examiner says for part three, I will ask you some more questions connected to the topic of part two. Okay, so that's a signal. The examiner is saying, hey, look, we're still talking about the same ideas as part two. So if you can connect your answers to what you just told me in part two, that's great. I will give you more score for coherence, uh, for fluency by doing that, okay? So that's very powerful. Make sure to uh, do that, okay? So as I mentioned before, or you can even say, as I mentioned in the previous part, the examiner is using the words part one, part two, so you can. You can say, as I mentioned in the previous part, or as I mentioned in part two, you can say that. Okay. So don't be, don't be shy, be confident, use those expressions. All right. Make those connections. You'll get a better score. Now, students, if in part three, you realize that you airballed part two. So sometimes that happens when the examiner starts asking part three questions, the student realizes, oh man, I didn't even talk about the right topic, I think, for part two. 
don't panic, okay? Uh, in the exam, you never want to look backwards. You always want to look forwards. So look forward, not backward, okay? Um, if you realize that maybe you airballed, means made a big mistake or spoke off topic in part two, don't panic, okay? Just focus on part three. You can still get a good grade, all right? So as I previously mentioned, oh, just a second, let me get you back here. Quite sure what happened there. Just give me a moment. Get you back on screen in no time. There we are. Okay. So, oh. Uh, so again, make sure to make those connections. Okay, connect, connect, connect. Okay. All right, um, now another one more important point is uh, if you're not sure about, thank you, Nabeen, that's my daughter. Uh, she's soon to be three. Um, so if you're not sure about the uh, question, about what you're being asked, what should you do? That can happen in part three, okay? So in part three, some questions are quite complex. They can use some very difficult vocabulary. So if you have a question that's kind of confusing for you, what should you do? Okay, what can you do in that situation? Definitely don't panic, Tina. Yeah, definitely don't panic. That's panic is your worst enemy. Um, no, I don't, okay, always do your best, but what does that actually mean, Tina? Yeah, Pachu, first of all, um, ask for it to be repeated. Asma, don't apologize, don't apologize just yet, uh, or you can say, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not clear on what you're uh, saying. Um, so there are two things you can do. You can say, Okay, so one way that you can do it is just ask for a repeat. So again, say what I say. I didn't quite catch that. Can you please repeat the question? Okay. Um, you can ask Brown Jesus to have the examiner rephrase the question, but they won't, okay? So uh, the examiners are not allowed to paraphrase or rephrase the question. So if you say, can you rephrase the question or can you paraphrase the question, the examiner might just say, nope, but I can repeat it, or they might just repeat it, okay? Uh, they're not supposed to paraphrase because that's extra help, and they're not supposed to give you extra help. This is not a lesson. This is a an evaluation of your language skills so they can only repeat, okay? So I didn't quite catch that. Can you please repeat the question? Or you can try to paraphrase it. So you can say, um, hmm, so are you asking me, and then paraphrase. Paraphrase means try to say the question that you think you just heard in another way, okay? So, hmm, so are you asking me, and then paraphrase. And the examiner in that case might be able to kind of give you a nod, or they may say yes, uh, or they may say no, okay? They, they still can't really help you, but it's better than asking them to rephrase or paraphrase. Yeah, Paula, absolutely, you can say, do you mean, and then paraphrase, okay? Now, if you absolutely don't get the question, what should you do? So the examiner repeats the part three question. You still are like, oh, I'm clueless. I have no idea. Um, what can you do? Okay, Brown Jesus is kind of asking me the same thing. I have no knowledge about this question. Bagzad says, just go to the next question. Don't waste time. Yeah, if you give a really uh, off-topic answer, if you give a strange answer, it doesn't make any sense, you just get minus points, okay? You're just losing band scores. So don't do that. Uh, you're going to lose band scores if you skip questions as well. 
probably know more than you will if you just give a completely weird answer, okay? So, um, in fact, in the whole speaking, you will lose less points if you skip an answer than if you give a strange answer because, do you know why? Why? So why can you probably get a better score if you just ask to skip the question than if you give a strange answer? Why do you think you might get a better band score in the end? So just say, I'm sorry, I don't get what you're asking me. Can we move to the next question? Okay. So why might you get a better score if you ask to skip a question that you don't understand than trying to just say anything that comes to mind? Why do you think? Begzod says, well, maybe the next question's easier. Uh, kind of, kind of. Uh, the reason why, students, some of you are probably thinking, why? Why is Adrian saying I might get a better score if I just skip that question? Well, um, because, uh, not quite Amrit, but that's funny, um, because you save time, okay? So if you don't waste time trying to give a strange, silly, weird answer, then you save a little bit of time and the examiner might be able to ask you another question. And if they ask you another question and you answer that one correctly, then that will help your score improve, okay? So... This can save time for an additional question that you can answer and get points for. Okay? Now, don't be too quick to do this. Of course, I'm not telling you to, oh, I kind of don't know. I kind of, let's go, just go to the next question. So you have to be very strategic with this. Okay? Uh, so skipping an answer is better than giving a wrong answer, Rahul, because you save time. Exactly. Rahul Hardas. Absolutely. Okay, let's get to part three. So let's practice some of these skills. Here we go. Part three. Let's talk about decorations. Okay. Uh, so the examiner says, let's talk about decorations. Immediately, you should be thinking ornaments. Uh, pictures, paintings, statues, okay, art. Uh, so you're thinking decorations. And then the question comes, why do people like to decorate their homes? And some of these questions just kind of seem like really obvious, okay? So why do people like to decorate their homes? Give me an answer for this. If you don't know right away, you may start with, uh, hmm, that's an interesting question. Okay. And then think a little bit. You sometimes don't even need to say, can I think for a minute? Just say, hmm, that's an interesting question. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. It's okay to think for four seconds and then give your answer. All right. All right. Uh, Parvinder says, because people are becoming more modern, that's why they decorate their home to enhance their social status. They rely on new methods such as painting, sculptures, art, and design for the house. Parvinder, I'm a little bit confused by what you're actually saying. You might want to rethink that. Okay. All right. Uh, Nepali says decorating the home makes a person feel like they are in heaven and many more. Uh, Nepali, again, I'm not too sure what you're saying with that. So you might want to rethink that. Those are not high band score answers so far. Kyber says, well, uh, the decoration around the house plays a major role in determining the mood of the place. The decor of the house also has an effect on the mood of the guests or people living in the house. So it is important to pay attention to decor. Uh, Kyber, that's okay. Yeah, that's definitely a bit better answer. So uh, mood is a good reason. So it sets the person's mood. 
Uh, Paula says, hmm, I suppose people use ornaments in their home to make the place more cozy and familiar. For example, when I moved to my new apartment, I bought a few plants and paintings to feel at home. Right, Paula, to feel at home. More comfortable is okay. Uh, Paula, that's a good answer. So now we're getting into the higher band scores of band seven, eight. Okay, so the mood and Paula saying the mood of being cozy and familiar. Uh, what other reasons might there be? Um, Amrit says people today have become very innovative, so they want to show their creativity and it makes their home look astonishing. Amrit, I definitely had to correct a couple parts of what you just said there. Again, students, make sure to repeat this information that we're saying here. Okay, so use your voice. Uh, Amrit, uh, people like to show their creativity. They like to show their style, right? Their preferences for art, their taste uh, for what is beautiful and what is important to them. Uh, Begzad says the chief reason why individuals want to make their homes comfortable to live uh, okay, begs out a little bit of an awkward start. I would say the chief reason why individuals decorate their homes is to make it comfortable. Just yesterday, I bought a new cozy sofa and I love sitting in it as it is relaxing after work. Um, sure. Okay. All right. Some good answers. Uh, hmm, that's an interesting question. Uh, the most important reason... that why individuals ornate their living space is to set the mood and create a comfortable environment for family and Friends. Also, they are able to express their taste for art and what they believe is beautiful. Okay, this is the reason I have a van go replica in my hallway all right sure so here we go this is my answer repeat after me hmm that's an interesting question the most important reason why individuals ornate their living space is to set the mood and create comfortable environment create a comfortable environment for family and friends. Also, they are able to express their taste for art and what they believe is beautiful. This is the reason I have a Van Gogh replica in my hallway, my favorite painter. Um, all right, so uh, notice a couple of interesting expressions here. Uh, set the mood, okay? And uh, the word ornate used as the verb instead of decorate. So ornate, decorate, okay? Those work well. All right. Uh, again, students, notice the um, smooth flowing example. So I say, this is the reason why I have a Van Gogh replica in my hallway. If I say my example this way, the examiner cannot interrupt me. They can't just jump to the next question, which happens often these days. So uh, a lot of people taking the speaking exam these days, examiners are not patient when they hear, for example, I or... Uh, for instance, I, then they will often cut into your uh, response and jump to the next question. One way to get around that is to make your examples a little bit trickier and more smooth in your answers like this. And then you can get points for that, okay? All right. Now, in part three, um, they have uh, follow-up questions. So in this case, we have the follow-up question, how about the workplace? So first question, 
Why do people like to decorate their homes? You give an answer and very quickly the examiner will say, how about their workplace? So you have to have a good answer for that as well. If you need a second to think, don't rush. Don't feel like because the follow-up uh, question is so quick, you have to qu quickly answer. You can say, oh, just a moment. Okay, uh, well, the workplace um, is, and then begin. So uh, part three, it's more conversation style. So there will be follow-up questions like, can you elaborate on that? Can you give more details? Or here, how about the workplace? So why do people like to decorate their homes? To set the mood, to make it feel like home, and to express their taste for art. How about the workplace? Well, I suppose people like to... Let's see what you have. Uh, Amrit, um, don't talk about change among fashion and decoration over the past three decades. We're nowhere near a question that's asking you about that. Uh, Paula says, well, workplaces are usually decorated to make workers feel more focused on their job. For instance, it's proven that bright light and colors in workplaces are linked with uh, effectiveness. Uh, Paula, I would say alertness, so being alert awake and alert. It's like drinking a coffee, right? Bright colors. Ah, uh, Google head office. <laughs> so uh, Paula says, my company recently painted our office light blue. Uh, so it helps uh, staff to concentrate. Good, Paula. Nice, smooth, flowing example. Good, uh, good chattiness by our members there. Uh, Begzod says, well, I suppose that people mainly want to ornate their uh, place of work uh, so as to be more efficient. Sure. Uh, Ferdov says, nowadays many people waste time at work and as I mentioned before, comfortable environment um, helps to mitigate this situation with uh, some decorations. Okay. Uh, Ferdov's the second half of your sentence is uh, incoherent. It means I can't understand it. So you have to rethink it. Okay. Uh, Tina says offices as well as homes are decorated by uh, art and other objects to be more comfortable for people. This is the reason that I always put a bunch of flowers on my desk. Uh, Tina, I really love your example. That's great. Uh, Tina, don't use the word stuff. Okay. Students, no stuff, no things, no you in speaking. Okay. So when you're on the IELTS speaking exam, do not use the word stuff, things, and you I promise your band score will go up. Those words lead to poor communication. So avoid them. Jun la torre, Juan la torre. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, decorating at work. Um, is done to feel, uh, to help people feel um, comfortable and focused in their environment. Uh, Juan Latore or Chun Latore, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, sorry about that. A um, little bit awkward on the phrasing, okay? Uh, work, working, working, you need to avoid that repetition of work, working, all right? Um, So how about the workplace? I suppose for similar reasons as their homes to feel more comfortable, like putting a picture of a person's family on their desk as well as to help them uh, focus and stay energetic. This is why Google uses a lot of bright colors in their office buildings. Okay. 
All right. So uh, here's my answer. Repeat after me. How about the workplace? I suppose for similar reasons as their homes to feel more comfortable, like putting a picture of a person's family on their desk, as well as to help them focus and stay energetic. This is why Google uses a lot of bright colors in their office buildings. All right, uh, next question. Have people's decorative styles changed over the past 30 years? Here, you're going to have to visualize a little bit. Uh, picture what uh, homes and offices looked like 30 years ago. Think about what they look like today and then give a good answer. So how have uh, people's decorative styles changed over the past 30 years? 30 years is three decades. It's roughly a generation, right? So we're talking about the previous generation compared to the generation now, okay? So how has this changed according to the best of your knowledge that's definitely changed so don't say oh it hasn't changed uh that would be strange okay all right rahul i see you answered the previous questions well reasons behind decorating the workplace are to feel a positive aura and to get excited for the day my company decorates the office with fresh elegant flowers to boost staff energy. Rahul, just a few grammar corrections there, but otherwise a very nice response. Just make sure that you can say it nice and fluently. Okay. Uh, Travis, yeah, we still use decorations of the past 30 years. Sure. We use decorations from even a hundred or 500 years ago. Um, but the overall style of decoration has definitely changed. So you need to be able to express that. Okay. Bashar Al Ghul says innovation, taste in art, ideas, and social media has shown people a variety of new styles, which has influenced decorating the home and the workplace. In what way, Bashar? You're on the right track. How do you mean? Parvinder says, yes, certainly, because uh, decades before, uh, people uh, adapted handicrafts to decorate their homes, but now they follow new trends and usually purchase art to display in their homes. Uh, Parvinder, you had a good start with people who used handcrafts um, to decorate their homes, but these days people often purchase art. Uh, art. That's a, that's a good start as well. But how is the style? Okay. The focus is decorative styles. All right. Uh, Aidana Sadibek says, definitely it has changed significantly as in my parents' time, almost all the houses had the same decorations. What I mean is that, uh, at that time it was more simple and nobody tried to stand out. Nowadays, there are many unique types of decorations. Yeah, so Ayanda, you are absolutely on the right path there. A little bit of correction, but it's some good, uh, it's a good response. Mario, Espitia, uh, it has been evident. Um, the changes have been evident recently. Houses look different in several aspects, such as walls, colorful paintings, and different types of windows. Uh, Mario, very good. Just watch that passive present perfect at the beginning there. It needs to be a little bit more accurate. Okay. Uh, for Dobbs says for the past 30 years, people have been decorating their homes and job places with meaningless pictures and styles. Okay. All right. Uh, Ivan Nazarenko, good to see you in class. Uh, Ivan says there is an increasing of non-natural materials, uh, artificial materials, Ivan. So there has been, uh, Ivan, use the present perfect. Okay. So there has been an increase 
of artificial materials like plastics in decorations, but three decades ago, uh, natural material like wood was much more common. Ivan, fantastic, okay? Uh, the materials that decorations are made of has changed a lot, I agree. And you've identified that well, just make sure to express it clearly, okay, clearly. Blandina, Jerry says, yes, in the past three decades, uh, people used to decorate with paintings and flowers and natural items or objects. But nowadays, they use artificial materials like plastics and glass. Okay, sure. Um, so, well, there have been numerous uh, changes in decorative fads over the past three decades, not only in colors, but also with materials. What I mean is that a generation ago, most decorations were made of natural materials like wood and were earth tone darker colors. However, These days, the use of artificial materials are much more common, like plastic with bright colors. Okay. So uh, there's my answer. Uh, just repeat after me. So, well, there have been numerous changes. Again, students, right away, show the grammar. Remember, in the beginning, we said one of the really important uh, points to remember for part three is use the question, paraphrase the question, okay? So, well, there have been numerous changes in decorative fads over the past three decades, not only in colors, but also with materials. What I mean is that a generation ago, most decorations were made of natural materials like wood and were earth tone, darker colors. However, these days, the use of artificial materials are much more common like plastic with bright colors. Okay. All right. Uh, earth tone colors are kind of as it sounds, the colors of the earth. So green, brown, black, gray, kind of closer to the colors of the earth, okay? Um, all right, why? So the follow-up question sometimes by the examiner will be very quick, very simple. They'll say why, okay? So you just told them that yes, it has changed. Uh, materials have changed, the colors have changed, uh, and then the examiner says, why? Okay, uh, so have a good answer right away. So why? Why have these changes taken place? Okay, um, stick to it. And Travis, you can say exactly that. I promise you, as long as you practice, 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 remember uh, the rules of good communication, you will master giving answers like that, okay? Uh, June Latore says, uh, advancements of technology. Uh, June, have at least a connecting word like because of, because of advancements in technology. Um, yes, I would say that's half of it. There's probably a little bit more uh, to this than just advancements in technology. Begzod also says the primary reason is that um, that these uh, changes have taken place is because of advancements in technology. Uh, students, a really good uh, strategy to get a better band score, when you have the follow-up question why, don't forget 
that this is still continuing with the present perfect grammar. Okay, so the initial question, the first question was present perfect. So you should stay with the present perfect to get that little bit of a higher band score. Okay. Rahul says, for example, my parents not only purchased a new giant aquarium with about 50 tiny fishes of different colors, but also colorful artificial pictures, which are awesome. I love them in my home now. I like your example. Uh, Jyoti says, the reason is people are more attracted to creativity nowadays. Um, sure, Jyoti, you're going to have to explain that clearer. Okay, I'm just saying that is not 100% clear on what you're actually telling me. I kind of get what you're telling me, but it's not completely clear. Aidana says, well, uh, as I mentioned... Uh, time does not change, but people change. What I mean is that each generation wants to create their own style. Perhaps, Idana, but I'm not sure if that is a clear explanation. Uh, Juan Pablo Avila says, because it has been cheaper for companies to manufacture artificial materials than, natural, than using natural uh, organic materials like wood. Absolutely, Juan Pablo. I was wondering when someone might say that that uh, it's also to do with cost, right? Uh, natural materials these days have become very expensive, uh, like mahogany, which is an expensive type of wood. Uh, well, the reason these changes have happened is largely... due to availability of materials as natural wood has become very expensive compared to plastic, and also technology has enabled people to be a lot more expressive with colors and artificial decor, okay? Um, like the giant blue, green, and red plastic vase in my parents' hallway. Okay, let's throw an example in there. Strengthen that response. All right. So, uh, some good ideas, students. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it now. I can see that there are much longer responses coming. Gabriel Vinegas says, perhaps manufacturing is uh, using less natural materials than before. It means that technology has developed for new materials and adapting to people's creative new tastes. Uh, Gabriel, very good. I corrected a couple of uh, words there. Uh, in the grammar, so check that later. Uh, here we go, students. Well, the reason these changes have happened, uh, so notice that again I'm using the present perfect. So I'm taking this chance to show the examiner a second time that, yeah, I got you, you were asking me in present perfect, and I'll continue with that, is largely due to availability of materials as natural wood has become very expensive compared to plastic, and also Technology has enabled, look at that, another present perfect, people to be a lot more expressive with colors and artificial decor, like the giant blue, green, and red plastic vase 
in my parents' hallway, okay? So again, that flu smooth flowing example um, and um, using that present perfect, okay? All right, um, next question. Students, here we go. You're doing great. You're progressing, you're improving. Make sure you keep repeating me. Repeat your classmates, your peers. Some of them have some great answers, okay? Here we go, next one. Where are usual places for people to buy decorations for, for their homes? Okay, uh, pay attention to the question, usual places. Don't start talking about strange places to buy decorations because your score will go down. Okay, you have to answer the exact question that you're being asked, all right? Uh, Begzod says, hmm, that's an interesting question. Can you give me a moment? Sure. Well, most people often purchase ornaments from both electronic and furniture stores for their home. Just last week, I bought a table made of mahogany. Begzod, you must have a nice size bank account because tables made of mahogany cost a fortune, at least in my part of the world. Um, but anyway, good example, Begzod. That's a great example. Uh, furniture and electronic store for decorations, mm, usual places, I guess. So we could argue that one. Um, what are furniture stores? Yes. Electronic stores, not so much, I think. Um, what are some other places where people buy decorations from their home? There's a couple places that are probably even more popular. Think about traveling. What kind of shops do people go to? Juan Pablo, very good. Avila says, some common places, nice paraphrasing, Juan. Some common places are home centers or supermarkets because in those places, ornaments are cheap with a great selection. Okay. All right. Uh, Ferdov says, nowadays there are a variety of places to purchase decorative goods, such as museums. Uh, for example, last year when I was at the Louvre, I bought some artifacts. Wow, Ferdov's, really? <laughs> okay, um, maybe an original Michelangelo. Um, Ferdov's, uh, careful with the question, common or usual places. Museum gift shops, uh, maybe, okay. Uh, souvenir shops for doves would be a little bit better. Brown Jesus says people can buy uh, decent uh, decor in supermarkets, but nowadays online markets are the most beloved places with a variety of choices. Uh, Brown Jesus, uh, hmm. supermarkets is a bit odd. Yeah, we can buy decorations there, but they're not the kind of common places. I'm surprised nobody said an art gallery so far. Has nobody said art gallery or did I just miss it? Okay, uh, an art gallery is definitely a place where people buy decorations such as paintings uh, for their homes. Uh, Juan Latore, garage sales. Yeah, if you have garage sales, uh, then yes, okay. Uh, vintage shops, Paula Dennis, very good. Yeah, vintage shops are absolutely places where people buy decorations. Again, students, if you can't think of, of the places right away, ask for time and then visualize and see where people buy these uh, decorations. So um, I think it was Juan Pablo using some common venues. So uh, some common venues where enthusiasts uh, often, or let's say frequently, purchase uh, decorations for their homes are Souvenir shops, art galleries, 
And for the frugal types, garage sales. In fact, I just bought a beautiful lamp. for my study for two bucks at a yard sale down the street. All right, so um, here we go. Rahul, you said art gallery, good for you. Uh, repeat after me, students. Where are usual places for people to buy decorations for their homes. Some common venues, venues are places where people buy items. Some common venues where art enthusiasts frequently purchase decorations for their homes are souvenir shops, art galleries, and for the frugal types, frugal types means people who like to save money, okay? Uh, frugal types, garage sales. In fact, I just bought a beautiful lamp for my study for two bucks at a yard sale down the street. Not bow, that's different, that's the front of a boat. Bought, not pucks, because that's, the, uh, I, that's what we play hockey with, but bucks with a B. All right, so that again is your band nine answer. You're giving a couple different reasons. All right, um, so let's see. I thought I saw uh, ma, ma, ma question, maybe not. Okay, uh, so then comes the follow-up question. Yeah, part three questions are usually not about you, so you don't generally use I, especially when starting your answer, Pachu. Um, so you start third person, and then you can roll in a smooth example like in fact i just bought a beautiful lamp for my study for two bucks at a yard sale down the street all right now um how about unusual places okay how about unusual places now before you give me your answer for that one here's an interesting question for you what if you accidentally answered an unusual place for this question so the first question is, what are usual places to buy decorations? Now, sometimes people are nervous, they make a mistake, and they uh, answer with the opposite. So they say an unusual place. And then the follow-up question is, how about unusual places? And that's when you realize, oh, I think I just said that for the last one. Um, what should you do? If you realize you make that kind of a mistake, you, you are confused, what should you do? Okay, what is a good strategy in part three? Again, this is an important strategy for part three to save scores and increase your band score. What should you do? Paula says, answer the usual now. Uh, yeah, Paula, but just make that clear uh, for the examiner, okay? So explain your correction, Paula. So say, oh, I'm sorry, I actually answered unusual for your previous question. So if you don't mind, I can maybe answer the usual places for this one and then just reverse it. So it's okay, communicate to them. And then they'll say, oh, great, the student realized their mistake. They'll go back, they'll correct that on their answer sheet. Don't worry, okay? So, all right. Um, so yeah, definitely self-correction is really good in English exams, including the speaking exam. So if you make a mistake and catch yourself, this is another tip, this is tip number eight, okay? Okay, so if you make a mistake and catch yourself, don't just ignore it. Don't be like, oh, I made a mistake. Whatever, I'll just keep going. Um, then uh, express yourself and uh, your intent to correct that mistake. So say, oh, I'm sorry. 
or oh, my apologies. I made a mistake. So now I will bop and then, okay. Or uh, that's not what I meant to say. What I mean is, and then correct yourself. Okay, so those are some really good phrases in these kinds of situations. Um, yeah, if the examiner, so Begzad says, what if the examiner says, just continue with this question? Uh, then just continue with the question, mostly repeat or paraphrase your previous answer if it was the unusual Begzad, uh, but still let them know that you realize your mistake. Um, so you can still say, oh, okay, sure, no problem. I'll restate what I said, but I do realize that the last question was the usual places to get decorations and not the unusual places. Okay, so now students, you can answer this question. Thank you for your patience, and hopefully you will remember that important piece of advice. Okay, so now answer this question. How about unusual places? Now, of course, the full question is, uh, where are unusual places for people to buy decorations for their home? Okay, so how about unusual places for people to buy decorations for their home? What are some unusual places? They might have to think for a second. Hmm, well, I never really thought about that. Please allow me a moment. Okay, I would definitely buy some time. Even if, uh, of course, English is my native language, uh, I would still buy time here. So I will, if I'm talking to my friend or someone, I would still say, well, okay, just give me a second to think about that, right? Uh, art galleries and souvenir shops, bags out are very usual places, very common places to buy uh, um, decorations for your house. Yeah, absolutely. That's what they are. Kamal says, well, baby stores as well as local shops which are open for household purposes, not for decoration items, I suppose. Rahul says online or at a second-hand store. Ferdov says there are secret auctions or art galleries that are just for the elites. Uh, perhaps, but Try to think about um, some other places where you usually would not find decorations. Okay, there's lots. Uh, Rahul says museums or zoos. Yeah, I would agree. Museums and zoos, we just don't visit them as often, so they might be less common. They could be souvenir shops, though, as well. Um, there are other places. Okay. Tina says, in my opinion, a bazaar uh, is an unusual place to buy decorations sure uh paula says hmm, can i think for a moment i think the most strange place where people can find decorations is in supermarkets um in little supermarkets i saw furniture sure uh or other stores so think of places where you go where you don't go to buy uh decorations like a hardware store for example or uh, maybe a stationery, right? Where you buy pencils, uh, paper, pens, and so on, right? So there are lots of other stores. Um, Ikea, but you would not be a good idea because Ikea is full of decorations. It's a very common place, okay? Just think about any place where you go where it's not for the purpose of food, like a restaurant, right? So <clears throat> think outside the box, students. A couple places that come to mind are hardware stores and restaurants. Like the other day, my dad bought a painting off the wall of a Chinese 
uh, restaurant because he really liked it. And the owner sold it to him. Okay, so think outside the box. There's Kate, Tina, there you go. Subway stations. Amrit, a grocery store. Okay, now you're thinking, right? Practice thinking out of the box. So repeat after me. How about unusual places? Hmm, well, I never really thought about that. Please allow me a moment. A couple of places that come to mind are hardware stores and restaurants. Like the other day, my dad bought a painting off the wall of a Chinese restaurant because he really liked it, and the owner sold it to him. Okay, so there are always answers. Don't overcomplicate. Okay, don't overcomplicate your thinking. Just keep it simple, but do practice thinking outside of the box. Okay. All right. Now, if you're doing a good job, the examiner will ask you some more questions. Like let's talk about souvenirs. Why do people like to take souvenirs with them back home from other countries? Can you give examples? What kinds of souvenirs are inappropriate to take away from certain place? Uh, why do people do it anyway? What do people have to be careful about when buying souvenirs for international travel? I will leave these questions to you, uh, my beautiful, intelligent, amazing viewing audience. You can record your answer to these questions on your phone and send it to me by email in MP3. I will gladly give you a score estimate. Okay, you're very welcome, Bagzad. Again, remember these points for part three. Keep calm, stay confident, use the questions in your answer. Answer explain with a smooth example. Don't go off topic, very important. If you need time to think about answers, ask for time. Okay, connect your answers to part two and other questions in part three. If questions are unclear, Ask for clarity. Ask for repetition. If you still don't get it, ask to go to the next question. If you make mistakes and catch yourself, correct yourself. Don't just ignore your mistakes. Follow these advice and you will improve your band score. Guarantee it. You're very welcome, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. I will be back uh, tomorrow with reading and listening from our websites. Uh, General IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Click that red button to join us for the academic module. Check us out at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join us there. And remember, you can use the code uh, LIVE20, L-I-V-E 20, on our websites for a 20% discount. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. And if it's late in your country, get some good rest and sweet dreams. Bye for now.